Logic's most basic distortion plugins are Distortion, Overdrive, and Distortion 2. Each of these presents a simple interface for quickly and easily dialing up a little, or a lot, of distortion, and each plugin has its own particular distortion character. In the case of Distortion 2, there are actually several options available. Distortion and Overdrive share the same interface. There's a drive knob for cranking up the amount of distortion, and an output knob for bringing the overall distorted level back down to the same level as the bypassed signal. A new convenience feature is the Level Compensation button, which looks to do this automatically. As you increase drive, the output level is decreased to maintain a more consistent level, making it much easier to experiment with different amounts of distortion without being distracted by how much the level of the track is changing in the mix. It doesn't track the increasing distorted level that closely, but it does make the process of dialing up an increase in drive much more convenient. And the regular output level is still active too, of course. The tone knob sets the cutoff frequency of a high cut filter. With greater amounts of distortion, the added higher harmonics can become harsh and overly bright, so this lets you reduce their level, leaving mainly the lower harmonic distortion components for a thicker sound without that added harshness. The graph here illustrates the effect the tone knob will have on the added distortion harmonics. But if you're using one of these plugins on a guitar track and it's followed by a clean amp sim or a guitar amp speaker emulation, then you probably won't need to use the tone control. The band-limited output of the amp or speaker sim will tame any excess highs, just as it does when you use an analog distortion pedal in front of a real amp. While distortions and overdrive's front panels are identical, naturally each has its own distinct distortion character. They both simulate transistor-style distortion, but distortion is meant to emulate a bipolar transistor, which tend to impart a harsher, buzzier edge, especially when pushed hard. While overdrive is modeled on an FET, or FET, field effect transistor, which is known for a smoother, crunchier, more tube-like edge. Besides their obvious applications for guitar tracks, these plugins can lend some crunch or buzz to other instruments as well. Distortion 2 has a little more on tap. Basically, it's the distortion section from Logic's modeled Vintage B3 Virtual Instrument and Leslie Cabinet emulation. But as opposed to Distortion and Overdrive, which each have just their one sound, Distortion 2 has five options, and a couple of them are a bit more flexible, thanks to one of the other controls in the plugin window. The plugin consists of three knobs and a pop up menu for selecting the five different distortion circuit emulations. There's also a drop-down panel with an output level adjustment and a mix control. Pre-gain is a simple input level control. At least one of the distortion emulations in this plugin is fairly subtle, and this knob will let you bring a lower level input up enough to drive it. Drive, naturally, dials up the amount of distortion. And Tone, once again, can be used to mellow out any harsh high-frequency distortion components. Although it does a little more than that with some of the distortion models, as we'll see in a minute. The first three of those models are from the original EVB3 instrument. Growl 
models the throaty edge of the tube amplifier found in a typical Leslie cabinet. That's what provides the classic overdriven Hammond organ sound. And it can lend that warm growl to plenty of other signals for a nice, subtle grind. Bitey and Nasty were originally added to emulate the sound achieved by Hammond players who ran their organs through other amps, offering the much edgier sounds of overdriven guitar amps. Growl produces both odd and even harmonic distortion components. This is typical of many preamp tubes. The even order harmonics give the distortion a fuller, softer quality. The other two, especially Nasty, tend to emphasize odd harmonics for a more edgy quality. A more recent addition to Distortion 2 are the two additional circuit emulations, labeled AB Soft and AB Hard. According to Logic's documentation, these are models of a 6550 tube circuit running in Class AB, push-pull mode, which is typical for instrument amps. I don't really want to get into technical circuit details here, but since Logic's identify these options with a technical description, I'll point out that AB tube operation tends to cancel out even order distortion harmonics, and as the graph shows, the distortion in both these models is made up of predominantly odd harmonics, which contribute to their extra grind and rasp. The graph also shows that, although the tone knob seems to function like a high-cut filter cutoff with the growl model, with the others, it seems to act more like a bandpass filter. As it's dialed down, you can see it change the balance of distortion harmonics. And as you can hear, this creates a range of subtle variations on the basic distortion character of this plugin. This can help match the distortion to different sources, making distortion 2 a bit more versatile than it might initially appear at first glance. Next up, I'll move on to the more elaborate Clip Distortion plugin. <laughs> 